My name is David Guas. I'm the chef owner of Bayou Bakery in Arlington, Virginia. Here today on Dude Food talking to you about my chocolate pudding. We finish it with a beautiful peanut and bacon brittle. We're gonna start off making our pudding. All the ingredients are essential here. We've got whole milk. We're gonna go right into a small stock pot. We're going to bring that up to a quick simmer. While we're waiting for that milk to get scalded, we're going to add our dry ingredients into our mixing bowl. We've got a little bit of granulated sugar, our egg yolks, our cornstarch. One of the key ingredients is an unsweetened cocoa powder, and then a dash of salt, kosher please. So we're just going to marry all this together. It's going to look a little dry and crumbly, which it will be, so it's not going to come together like a thick paste. That's what we're going to wait for the milk to come up to a boil to add to it and temper it. So now our milk's come to a nice scald. You can see the bubbles forming on the side. Sort of tilt your pan a little bit and you're going to hear that sort of, that, that sort of sizzle and crackle. What we're going to do is we're going to add, remember we're just going to add a little bit at a time and break up that, that mixture that we had whisked together because it's sort of a little dry. Sort of create that paste, get that going first, then we'll come back to the milk and add it a little bit more steadily. So at this point we'll go ahead and add it in a more steady drizzle. And again we're doing this because we don't want to cook those eggs. You can stop about halfway through it and just make sure it's nice and incorporated. And then once you know that the temperature has risen and you've got a nice sort of hot base, you can go a little faster. You see how I continually whisk and I never stop vigorously whisking. At this point we're going to actually change out the pan. And the reason we do that is you can see a lot of the milk solids will get trapped and really stick to the bottom, all that residual sugar from whole milk. Um, and we don't want to go back into the same pan. I'm going to go ahead and add this whisk mixture right to a new pot. And the tendency is to crank up the heat and be done with it and have this bit finished in 30 seconds or so. But that is a tendency you actually have to really fight. So a nice medium heat patience is, is important in this particular recipe. At this point now that we've added it back to the clean pot, we're going to add a little bit of our vanilla extract. You want to cook out that starch flavor. So once it does thicken, you want to give it about another minute or so to make sure you don't have that graininess and that sort of cornstarch flavor. Be careful because this will spit and sputter. You can see it's doing a little bit of that right now. So now that we've cooked this out for a minute or so, we're going to go ahead and transfer it over to our bowl. Dump all this pudding right out into the bowl. So at this point we've transferred all our pudding. We're going to go ahead and add our chopped chocolate. In this case we've able to find the little coins of chocolate. If you can find those then there's no need to chop it. Then we're going to go ahead and add our butter. At this point we're just going to stir this until everything sort of melts and breaks down. You know, if you added your chocolate to the pan itself and you tried to cook it, uh, it can scorch really easily and so that's why we didn't do that. So once you're fully incorporated and you don't have any lumps, we're there. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of uh, plastic wrap over the top. So we're going to go ahead and press that plastic wrap down directly onto the pudding and that's going to keep that skin from forming. So we can go ahead and refrigerate this at that point. So now that our pudding is setting up in the refrigerator, we started our brittle. We've got granulated sugar, a little bit of corn syrup, and some water. Now there's a lot of fears behind caramelizing sugar. Uh, I think the main rule to remember is not to agitate it once it's in the pot. Stir it together gently, making sure that the sides don't get dirty with the sugar because it'll start to uh, crystallize on you. We're going to the magic number of 300 degrees, which we're just about there at this point. We've got reserved off to the side our pre-roasted uh, peanuts. We've got a little bit of unsalted butter our baking soda, our vanilla, and our salt. Now that we're at about 300 degrees, we're going to unclip our candy thermometer. 
And at this point, we're going to get our sill pad ready. If you don't have one of these fancy sill pads, just a lightly greased piece of parchment paper on a baking sheet will do. We're going to go ahead and add our butter, unsalted. A little bit of our vanilla. I'm adding my baking soda at the very last second, because once we do that, it's going to be the chemical reaction. The foam and froth is going to come up. So at this point, be ready. So once we've added that baking soda is when the real action starts. Be careful not to kick up any of this sugar and burn yourself, but at the same time, working right over the sill pad or your baking sheet. Once you've incorporated melted all your butter and got your baking soda in there, I'm going to go ahead lastly and stir in our peanuts. Got a couple jumpers there. Just coat this quickly. And then we're going to pour it right off into the pan. Pretty straightforward, pretty quick. But again, we want to go ahead and knock this process out before we uh, get our bacon rendered. Just gently sort of push this around as best as you can. Doesn't have to look pretty. We're going to chop this up. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and put the brittle aside. We've got our pan already preheated here, our cast iron. Just want to just put your hand over the top of the pan, about an inch or so from the, from the bottom of it, and feel the heat coming off of the, uh, the cast iron. At that point, we know that it's ready for the bacon. We've got our bacon pre-cut a little bit. We had to break it down in half just because of the length of the strips. And once we render this bacon, we'll reserve it to finish the brittle. Now, we're using Alan Benton's bacon out of Madisonville, Tennessee. This bacon is, uh, is sort of in a class of its own. So we've got this down rendering on one side. We're going to go ahead and flip it. Now, there's some things about bacon that we all know and love, and that's why we love bacon. It's the salt, it's the smoke, it's the porkiness, uh, that wonderful pork flavor. And that really is what matches up well with the, uh, the richness, the depth of the chocolate for the pudding itself. So now we've got our bacon right where we want it. Nice and crispy, but not too crispy. So it's rendered nicely, good color all the way through, and we flipped it evenly. So now we'll let that cool down. We'll get ready to chop it and fold it into our brittle. Our brittle's cooled down, our bacon's rendered, our pudding's chilled. Now it's time for the assembly. Here's our peanut brittle, completely cooled down. We're actually just going to flip it over once and using the back of a wooden spoon, give it a couple quick whacks just to break it up. Throw your back into it. Don't forget to clean the back of your pot. We're just take some of this bacon that we've already rendered off and just sort of sprinkle it in to what we've already ground up. And again, I just like the sort of big hunks and pieces and inconsistencies instead of putting it on a knife block and, and chopping it up. We're going to go ahead and go right to the pudding here and peel off that layer of plastic wrap to prevent our skin. And then what I like to do is take a wooden spoon and just beat up the pudding because it's you know it's been settled in the refrigerator and it's gotten kind of thick and tight so by throwing a little bit of air into it we're going to loosen it up and lighten it up so at this point we're ready to plate this we've got this beautiful pudding the more the merrier remember you're going to have all that sharp salty porky smoky bacon to top this off. A little bit of dollop of whipped cream, just slightly sweetened with a little bit of sugar and maybe a pinch of vanilla, not too much. None of that Cool Whip stuff out of the can. Whip your own cream, you'll see the difference. Now for the final topper, we've got our reserved shards of bacon and peanut brittle to set this bad boy off. There you have it, we've got our old-fashioned stovetop chocolate pudding finished with bacon and peanut brittle. For Mother's Day or any occasion, you're watching Dude Food. Don't forget to subscribe. The Brits like their toast like we like our commenters. Salty. See why we wouldn't eat Marmite ever again. Forget Klondike, you can choco your own dang tacos. Learn how on Dude Food. This cradle robber ambushes his lady with a gourmet meal. Find out if we cooked up a hookup. Lucky Charms? Check. Nutella? Check. Banana? Sure. Why not? Make this recipe because it's a real cereal killer. Subscribe for more free tasted treats.